everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be testing the VonCat suspension. Uh, this was sent to us uh, by someone who reached out to us via email to get our opinion on. It is a pre-production model, so things uh, are probably going to change. Um, it's slated to be a little bit cheaper than the Fox DHX2, and it's meant specifically for the Suron, so you're getting something that's valved for it, the bushings are for it, um, whereas the Fox is harder to come by, more expensive, um, getting the correct springs for it is kind of tricky, and same with the bushings. So we're going to test them side by side, see if the Von Cat is a good replacement um, for the Fox, and if it is better than the stock DNM um, that it also could be replacing. All right, so for the testing, we're going to be at Shotgun Creek. We've actually had the Von Cat shock for a couple of weeks now, but we wanted to, one, go somewhere we were familiar with so we knew where some potential good areas for testing were. And also, uh, we're in the Pacific Northwest and the weather has been kind of strange this spring, so we also wanted it to wait uh, for it to be mostly dry out just because that gives the shock the kind of best case scenario for testing. We wouldn't want to test um, in mud or anything super sandy. All right, so we got our three rear shocks here. The Von Cat on the left, the prototype, the Float X2, and then the DHX2. This was the one I've been running. This is the one Cole's been running over here. So we're gonna get a weight of all of these. Um, we'll start with the, just the body of the DHX2. We'll measure with the spring as well. So we're at 562 for that. And then we'll compare to just the body of the Von Cat. We're at 571, so very similar there. That would be indistinguishable. And then the Float X2. Granted, this is not a spring shock, so this should be heavier. 718. But now we will add the springs to both the DHX2 and the Von Cat include all of the bushings and then the, the spring holder and we'll get away there. All right, so for the Von Cat, we're at 1297 with all the bushings and the spring retainer at the bottom there. Remove this one, the bushings up, and then here's the Fox with the spring retainer and bushings. 1181, it's about 30, 40 grams lighter. Again, that's pretty negligible, especially on a dirt bike, so, uh, for all intents and purposes, those are fairly similar. And then again, the float was in the 700, so obviously significantly lighter than either of those options. So the, um, the ways to get the spring on and off of these shocks are a little bit different. And I'm gonna say right off the bat that I prefer the Von Katz um, method for removing the spring. Basically, on both of them, you're gonna want to um, release your preload um, all the way so that the shock is loose and on the Von Cat, all you need to do is pull the washer out and then it's free. On the Fox one, you have to remove the bushings um, which you can see up here. You have to remove this ring from the bottom uh, little eye here goes right there and then you can slide this off and it's a pretty tight fit. Um, it took me easily five times as long to get everything off of here and I washed, I lost one of the o-rings and had to look for it on the ground. Um, yeah, I think the Von Cat is much easier in that respect. Ideally, you don't really do it except for the time when you get the shock and you install it. But this is going to be the second spring that I put on the DHX2. So there you, there you go. All right, so we're going to compare the general construction of the two shocks here. Uh, we have the Von Cat on the left and the DHX2 on the right. As you can tell, they both should be the same eye to eye. That is 10.5 inches. And then if we compare the stroke, they are identical as well. That is three and a half inches. Between the two of them, um, they're pretty similar. The Fox has a bit more preload adjustment. Um, realistically, 
you shouldn't be messing with your preload too much. You can change between springs and whatnot um, for that. Uh, some other differences, the Voncat on the top here has just high speed compression. And on the bottom here has your rebound. Whereas with the Fox, you have your um, high speed and low speed compression. Um, you have low speed rebound and you have high speed rebound. Um, so you have a little bit more adjustability on the Fox. That being said, a shock that is valved for the bike that it's going on will not necessarily need all of those adjustments. Um, sure, they're nice to have, uh, but if you don't really know what you're doing, having those pre-valved to what they need to be already is perfectly adequate. Something to consider with the Fox shock is that uh, there's a couple different spring types. You have your super light steel, which is the orange here, and then you have just your standard steel spring um, if you want to go above the 450 pound per inch spring rate. So that's something to consider. Me and Cole are lighter riders. He tested the 500 and thinks it's a bit stiff. So we're gonna be moving to this one. And if you notice here, they're considerably different. Um, we had quite the long email exchange with Fox and they basically said, yeah, if you wanna go above 450, you have to go to the 3.25 inch stroke uh, that was part of the last generation of the Fox lineup. So you're not really getting a spring designed by Fox that's meant for this stroke length, which is 3.5. That being said, the correct one is 3.65 um, so the difference is you may run into coil binding depending on how much preload you have here, um, which just generally kind of stresses the shock and doesn't allow for maximum travel. With the Voncat setup, here's the 450 um, spring, and you can see fairly similar in length. You can tell that this one is designed for the stroke length of the shock as it should be. Um, so it's going to be a bit shorter than the 3.65 super light steel. And we do have a scale here. These feel very similar in weight. The standard steel Fox one feels heavier than the super light steel. So that's the difference there. For the Von Cat, you also can get a higher spring rate, um, but do consider it's longer. So you are going to need to compress it to get it onto the shock body. Yeah. All right. So. We're gonna give our first impressions on the shock and how it felt, um, how it felt compared to the DHX2, and I can give some insight uh, in comparison to the Float X2, and we can both kind of talk about how it is compared to stock. So um, to start with, we both have a rider weight of 160 pounds. We have the exact same linkage setup on both bikes. We have the same wheel and tire setup, same battery weight, Everything between the two bikes is basically identical, including the rider weight. So we feel swapping back and forth is a pretty fair comparison. Um, as far as setup goes, I sped up the rebound slightly from how it came from the factory. Um, compression is all the way open on both of them. And then I believe, what's your rebound setup on that? Well, on this uh, last ride, I had, um, I believe one click of low speed compression and wide open on the high speed rebound. Um, and that's from when I was on the 500 pound spring, it was a little stiff. So I just kind of needed to, to kind of run it open for the most part on, on compression. And we both were running like 10 to 15% sag. But something to note there is we had the preload ring um, as far up the body as it could go. So we could not run more sag. Um, so that being said, we're going to break it down into the feeling of three different categories, small bump compliance, which is just like riding down a bumpy gravel road. Um, the mid bump compliance, which is repeated small to medium sized hits and then big hits and cornering. Um, so to start off with small bumps, riding down a gravel road, this was pretty comfortable to sit on. It keeps you really supported. So you're sitting always at the top of your stroke, which is something that is less typical with mountain bike suspension. I feel like with all the mountain bike shocks I've tested, it wants to sit into the, the travel more. I can get more sag um, just sitting on the bike. Uh, is that is that kind of what you experienced as well? Um, yes, I, I would 
agree with that. Yeah, so it just, it generally sits higher in the travel and I feel like the Von Cat felt pretty similar to the Float X2 as far as just riding down a bumpy road goes. I think that Cole's bike felt a little bit, you could feel a little bit more feedback through it, um, but it still felt fine. Um, and if you're going at higher speeds, it, it didn't feel unstable. Yeah, so I think right off the bat, these feel stiff to my preference. Um, and especially compared to the Air Air Shock, uh, the Fox X2, um, on the big hits, if you're jumping, you can dial in that compression and get it extremely predictable every time. And it feels bottomless, uh, to be honest, on these these coil coil um, shocks. I experienced on the Fox DHX2 a situation where if I was going through a lot of um, kind of larger rocks or roots and like a whole section or garden of them if you will um, if I got forward over my fork so my rear tire was not weighted up with 10% regen um, it would kind of not really use that suspension at all and kind of buck me a little bit and that could be the way that I was using the throttle the way that I was riding it um, but it is a little disconcerting to kind of get thrown forward on your on your handlebars. And I had that happen to me more so on the DHX2, um, which is something to consider. Just for the high speed um, compression or rebound, if you the high speed sensitivity, I felt that just sitting down on a gravel road, the um, the Von Cat felt definitely a lot more comfortable um, just riding on a gravel road where the Fox DHX2 it was a it was a little bit like stiffer and a little bit more like rattly if you will um, moving up to the the middle speed uh, kind of compression or middle speed sensitivity I'm talking you're flying through a rock garden or so, some roots or whatever I felt like the Von Cat used that kind of you know middle travel a little bit less effectively than the Fox DHX2. Yeah, the when you hit repeated bumps, um, I don't feel that the rebound was too fast or too slow. It just generally felt a little bit stiffer. I didn't like as Cole was saying, you have you know eight inches of wheel travel or whatever. Um, through repeated mid-sized bumps, you should be starting to get a little deeper into the travel, and it didn't feel like it was reaching that point. Uh, I could slow down the rebound maybe a little bit more, um, but I felt like the rebound was in a pretty good spot. And one thing I really like on my bike or in my setup in general is when I jump up and down on it, I like to feel like the rebound in the front and rear is coming up and down at the same time. Um, so that's generally how I have it set up. But yeah, I think that the float or the, the Fox DHX2 was better through. Um, through the mid-size repeated bumps. Uh, again, that could be just a valving thing. I have the compression all the way open. Um, I never tried tightening it down just because I felt like it was already pretty stiff, but that I kind of like a stiffer setup. It's just a little more jarring through the repeated mid-size bumps. Yeah, and then on the, the final category for bigger jumps and cornering, I felt like the Von Cat was definitely better for big jumps. It it had more of, you could tell that it wasn't blowing through all of its travel. Not that the Fox was. I don't I don't think I ever bottomed out the Fox going off little jumps here and there. But when you land on the Von Cat, you feel really stable in the landing. With the so the the Fox felt a little bit softer, and when you are getting down into the travel, it feels a bit wallowy on landings, especially if you're going at a bit higher of a speed. Um, so it kind of depends. If you're going through big bumps at slow speeds, I think that the Fox maybe feels a bit better. Um, but kind of ski jump style long jumps where it's high speed and you have a pretty pretty big compression, I think that the Von Cat felt a bit more stable in situations like that. 
The only other thing is in cornering, I think that the Fox felt more comfortable through corners, but it felt less predictable. I felt like the, the suspension would sit deeper in its travel and any uh, pocket where I was losing traction at the tire, it would want to spit the tire out more. Uh, whereas with the Von Cat, it would sag in less and kind of hold its position or have more support going through the corner. And I felt like that slip point for me felt just, I felt a little more confident in knowing where that slip point was. So um, yeah, we're gonna throw the bigger batteries in, go out for a little bit longer ride and then give our final thoughts on it. <laughs> All right, so just to wrap some things up here with our final impressions, um, I think if you are looking to upgrade from stock, something like this shock would absolutely be a no-brainer. If it does end up go, uh, going into full production, I think it's a great choice. Um, other options out there are obviously Fox. I think maybe Rock Shocks, Olin's, and then the EXT Arma is kind of up there in that Olin's category, um, like the $1,000 plus range. This is nowhere near that, so I'm not sure that it's truly a fair comparison. You would hope for, you know, an extra $600, $800, whatever it may be, that it would be better. Um, I haven't gotten my hands on those ones, so I'm not going to make any statements about that, but... What I can say is that this was a very well-performing shock, especially for pre-production. Um, hopefully some of the um, compliance things that we talked about can be worked out in the next revision. I'm sure it's just a simple valving change. And again, we are on the lighter side, so I really feel like if I weighed 10 to 15 pounds more that it would have handled exactly how I wanted it to. Um, beyond that, there's not much else to say that we didn't cover in our first impressions. Hopefully um, we get another generation of these and we can do some more in-depth testing, but for now we need to send this model back. And uh, yeah, we appreciate y'all stopping by, watching the video. If you wanna see more content like this, please uh, consider subscribing. Liking the video always helps us out and have a nice day.